But when he turned against the messenger, the love turned to hate. And that's the way it will be with all of us. When you love Elijah Muhammad, you will hate those who actively work to oppose him. You can't help yourself. And you know what? It'll happen in your own families. You become divided over me and what I represent. Just like the Jesus said, think not that I come to bring peace, nay, a sword. I come to put the mother-in-law at variance with the daughter-in-law and the son-in-law at variance with the father-in-law, and they of a man's own household will be his worst enemies. See, when you put this kind of truth in a house, people will fall to one side or the other based upon how they relate to a person and personality in whom is the embodiment of the principle of that faith. We became divided because of how Malcolm began to relate to Elijah Muhammad. When he no longer related to Elijah Muhammad, we who loved Elijah Muhammad no longer related to him. And in that bitterness, anger, hatred rose up. And the climate of murder was set up. Well, did members of the nation kill him? I don't know. I really don't know. But I can tell you this. There was no member of the nation who loved Elijah Muhammad that would not have killed Malcolm. Right. I'll say that again. I'm going to say it again. The spirit of the whole nation was against Malcolm's life. We as a group did not do anything to him. But among every prophet's community, there's a group. There always was and there always will be. A group of zealots. They may be just a janitor in the mosque. Some simple, uh, when I say simple, I'm not talking about mind. But I'm talking about a simple person that you don't think too much of. They may be a clerk, typist, or somebody who just runs errands. But their heart is full with the love of that prophet. And whenever the prophet is attacked, those persons will rise to kill the enemy. And they'll go right back to sweeping the mosque. All right, listen to me. And I told Mr. Lee, as it was then, so it is now. As it was then, so it is now. We love Elijah Muhammad. We know what he did for us. We know what he did for Malcolm, and we know what he is doing for tens and hundreds of thousands of others. And we just are not going to stand by and allow his name to be dragged in the mud when he has done so much for all of us. We're just not going to do it. I thank you all for your kind patience this afternoon. And I hope and pray that each of us, each of us, will recognize that it takes hard trials to establish the truth. The last word I will read from the Quran, after Allah asks us to seek assistance through patience and prayer, he says, speak not of those who are slain in Allah's way as dead. Nay, 
They are alive, but you understand not. This verse of Quran is pointing out some of the trials that are going to be necessary to establish truth. Some of us may go to jail for the truth. Some of us may be killed for the truth. Some of us may be beaten for the truth. Some of us may lose things that we love for the sake of the truth. That's why we are told, seek assistance through patience and prayer. And Allah is saying that even if we are slain, if we are slain in the way of Allah, don't think that we are dead. Say, we are alive, but you perceive not. You know how beautiful that is? I wish I had time to explain how you can be physically dead and yet spiritually alive. Maybe there'll be another time. I would love to share that knowledge with you. That the righteous do not die. You just bury the house that they lived in. But the spirit of them, the mind of them, the wisdom, the vision of them, that's alive. And God at another time will raise a body, a body. And that mind and vision of that great righteous one will come into that body. And that person will be living again, only in another form. You didn't understand that, did you? How else could the scripture say, in that day God will pour out his spirit without number and you'll see all the old prophets walking around. You'll see Abraham, you'll see Noah, you'll see Lot, you'll see Moses, you'll see David, you'll see Daniel, you'll see Joshua. Well, you ain't gonna see the form that they lived in, but you'll see men and women with their same mind, their same strength, their same vision, walking now in a new body. They are not dead, but you perceive not. And we shall certainly try you with something of fear, hunger, loss of property, and lives, and fruits. I told my son, if I'm killed for the sake of the truth, don't turn back on your heels. Go forward. I don't expect to be killed. I want to make that very clear. That's right. I don't think they got a gun big enough. Right. Not as long as I know who Allah is and he is with me. Not unless it pleases him, they can't do nothing to me. And I'll stay here and, and, and dare them to do it. Shoot. I said, shoot. <laughs> that is what I said. Take it any way you want to. <laughs> but I said, shoot. Don't be afraid, young brothers. Don't be afraid to accept the responsibility that's going to bring trials into your life. Don't be afraid. When you run from that, you run from the thing that will manifest you as a great man and a great woman. Don't run from that. Run to it. Maybe one day we'll be hungry. We won't be able to eat. White folk may not sell us any food. And if we don't have our own farm and growing food, we're in a little trouble. Have you learned how to fast? You ought to. Suppose he comes to take our property. You know they took our bank, they took our planes, they took our land, took everything we had before. We were tried with that loss, weren't we? Are we back where we were? 
and going to get it all back and then some. Yes, sir. No, that's the way of God. He'll try you, then he'll give you more than you had. So give good news to the patient who are steadfast under trial. May Allah bless each and every one of you. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your patience with me this afternoon. I want to thank uh, Minister Rasul from Detroit, Michigan, for spending the day with us. Very happy to have you with us, Brother Rasul. And of course, Brother Ishmael, I thank you for your spirit. I thank you for your words of love and devotion and dedication. And I pray that Allah will bless you and make you into the wonderful minister that your father said you would become. And I pray the same for all of the children of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and my own children. And I pray the same for you, that you all will grow in wisdom and power and let's liberate our people and make a future for them and a future for ourselves. Mr. Craig Hodges is here of the world champion Bulls. I'd like to take this opportunity to say to Brother Craig, we really enjoyed your magnificent play on the court, and you've got the championship ring that you really deserve. But I'm more proud of your great championship pursuits outside of the basketball court. And let us, let us give Brother Craig Hodges and all you young brothers, before you leave, you be sure to get Brother Craig's uh, autograph. He's your brother, he loves you, and he wants you to be a champion. Not just a champion basketball player, but he wants you to be the champ here. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>